first, it's our own national treasure, the wonderful Jane Farley. Can I ask you, very cheekily, how old you would have been back in 1953? Um, 23. What are your memories of that time? Well, it's interesting because we lived in Rochdale. My late husband's first church was a church called Spotland in Rochdale. Um, quite a, a, a happening town, Rochdale. It had Gracie Fields, of course, and that we all never forgot that, you know. But it was, it was, it was a very, quite a lively town. Very strong political views. The Liberals were very strong in, in Rochdale. And I was a very new minister's wife. And as my father said, when I got married to John, who was a bit older than me, uh, he didn't think a church realised they were going to have a very young minister's wife who <laughs> wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> But I was made very welcome. Um, I couldn't always understand them because I had, although I come from Birmingham, um, I don't have a particular Birmingham accent. And the accents in Rochdale were fairly strong, as you can imagine. And But it was a very friendly place, very friendly. And, of course, the coronation was coming up. Very few people in Rochdale, certainly the area where we lived, would have televisions. I mean, there just weren't that many people who did have them. They were fairly new, weren't they? The odd people who did have televisions would invite some of their friends in. I mean, it, it wasn't like now when a building would have a big television and people could go. So the some senior members of John's church invited John and myself to go and watch the coronation at their house which was lovely, very comfortable. And really, I, I don't think I'd seen much television. You didn't. No, my, my own personal memories of television is, is uh, the smell of one warming up. Do you remember yes. the valves? Yes. We'd have a little nine-inch screen on ours, yeah. and it, yes. it took forever to warm up. Yes, and, it did. And then somebody had to hold the aerial and yeah. get the picture. And then things would happen. Sort of flashes and little bits. <laughs> yeah, happen, absolutely it? right. So, how many people went to this? Uh, church there was um, Fred uh, Ogden and his wife, and their daughter Marjorie. Their other daughter, I don't think, was there. She, funny enough, she lived in Birmingham. I didn't know her so well, but Fred and his wife, they were lovely. They were very kind. Fred was quite a character in the church. He was sort of the one who said how it was. And if you didn't agree with him, you either had to agree to disagree or you had to put up with it. But they were very kind and very friendly. I'm not sure whether he was involved in the cotton trade as the most of the people in the church in, we, we were had in Scotland, in Rochdale, were people who worked in mills, the cotton mills. I mean, that was the industry beginning probably to decline a little bit, but not vastly, really. I presume most people knew of the coronation. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, radio meant, meant a lot to a lot of people, right. and particularly to kids. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up with Children's Hour yeah. and Uncle Mac on Children's Hour. Oh. It was great, <laughs> and you learnt a lot, too. He was very good on nature talks, was Uncle Mac. He talked to quite a lot about that. Yes, he was sort of nice grandfatherly sort yes. of voice. Yes, I, we liked him. So people relied quite heavily on radio. Yes. The yes. lucky ones had television. Yes. But Were that, there any, any community events organised to coincide with it? I can't remember that, except I think the schools probably did something. I was doing a little bit of part-time teaching in various schools to sort of help out. I wasn't really aware of a big amount of... But I must have done. Well, I know children had... I think they don't know whether they had mugs there or mm. spoons. It, they tended to be coronation mugs. I don't know what's happened to mine. It was a, a spoon with a, a... You know, a, a teaspoon with a sort of handle and the date on or something like that. I think the education committees probably... Because it was a big event, wasn't it? It's it, so long since the last coronation for George the Sixth, and that would be coloured a bit by the the war then, of course, because you know. And a rather interesting thing about this particular church 
in this part of Rochdale because when Jersey and Guernsey were invaded, quite a lot of school kids were evacuated literally two or three days. I mean, they, they knew the Germans were coming by then. And a, a school load from Guernsey actually came and lived in this part of Rochdale. And quite a few families had had children from Guernsey staying with them. So there was quite a strong link between this particular church and the Channel Islands. How did that come about then? And what, what well, you... I think there must have been at least one or two personal things. I mean, it happened very quickly. So people who remembered the occupation, mm. they didn't have long. They probably had two or three days and it would be secondary school children. It wouldn't be pri- wouldn't be the sort of reception classes. And it would be some mothers with young children. A, quite a big load of school kids came. And, and the, when we were there, 1953, there were still quite close links. So from your memories, and you've done incredibly yeah. well to recall what you have, what would you say the reaction was by the people who lived in Rochdale? Were, were they hugely supportive of the coronation? Yes, I think they were. They wanted to celebrate it, especially oh, definitely. after the... Uh, and, the I mean, war. it wasn't a, the first time there was going to be a big country-wide celebration. And, I mean, some people managed to go down to London and, and saw it, how it all happened. And I think schools were quite keen on talking about it to kids because this was something once in a lifetime and look where we are 70 years later absolutely wait not having another one yet (laughs) yeah thank you ever so much for your time it's a pleasure anytime absolutely fabulous well i'll come back to you for the next uh, (laughs) two